Now, I was sitting there and my husband, and we were watching our son die before our eyes. And as parents, you think that your children think you should always be able to make it better. And this was one thing that we couldn't make better. It was out of our hands. At this stage, it was in the hands of the doctors, the nurses and God. 20 months old, Oliver Lewis's condition was deemed so serious, he was immediately transferred to Belfast under a police escort. The consultant told me to give him a big kiss and I knew that it was bad, but just the fact that the police were there to escort him to Belfast was just so much worse. At the hospital, Karen was soon joined by her husband, Alan. I remember seeing him at the top of the steps and I just, I just wanted to run to him because I feel like this was our baby. Um, so it was just, just to be back together with him, you know, that it was, it was like, this is our baby, our fight now. 23-year-old Alan Farnan's fight against meningitis, which had begun just a few short hours before, was now drawing to a close. A rash had appeared all over his body. The doctor came out and said to me, uh, I need to tell you, Alan's critical, you need to get your family together. And I said, is it meningitis? And they said, yes. And I thought, oh my God. The doctor said, well, we have given him everything we can possibly give him now. And I remember saying, is there hope? Oh, well, there's always hope. So I was clinging on to that hope. It was decided that Alan should be sedated to ease his pain. The rash was all over him at this stage. His glands had swollen. Uh, there was blood coming from his eyes. And um, so they asked, did, did you want to just, you know, have a few words with him before? Uh, he goes asleep. So I went in and I just said to him, Alan, you're going to be asleep for about three days now, um, but we'll be here. You won't know we're here, but you will be fine. And he just nodded. And we left the room for them to sedate him, but almost immediately they came out and they said, you know, it's, it's minute to minute now. But when we went in, um, I said, is, is he gone? And they said, just about, but he was gone at that stage. I knew by the line on the, the heart monitor, he was gone at that stage. Alan Farnan died on the 11th of August, 2006. He was 23 years old. From the time Luke was six weeks old, he had eczema all over his skin. I tried every lotion, potion, cream. So I battled with this until he got MRSA as well. I rang VHI, who put me through to the Second Opinion Service, which took over Luke's case and looked at it in a specialised way. By going to VHI, I had access to doctors from all over the world. <laughs> He's 90% better than what he was. My name's Elaine. I'm glad I'm a VHI healthcare member, and so is my son, Luke. Meningitis is an infection of the lining of the brain. It can strike anyone at any age at any time. The bacteria are passed on by prolonged or intimate contact. They are very fragile and do not survive outside the human body, so they're not easily transmitted. Meningitis is relatively rare. Watching someone you love with meningitis can be a highly traumatic experience. In May 2007, Karen Lewis's then 20-month-old son, Oliver, was suffering from meningitis. He was fighting for his life. While Oliver was being treated for meningitis, his family decided to keep a video diary. Alan just thought of it one day and said, asked the staff in ICU if we could make, if we could bring in the DVD or bring in the camera, I suppose. Well, the initial part in intensive care was it would be footage that we'd have if, it, if the worst had happened, if he didn't make it, at least it would be something that we had. When we then realised that he was going to have to have the amputations, we thought, well, this is actually good to keep for him because if he ever asks why we did it, you know, why he had to have his legs amputated, at least we could show him if he wants to. He might never see it. But if he does want to, at least we can show him, like, this is how bad you were, you know, because I think the image of him in intensive care, you can't get away from it. This, this was bad. 
people looking at it, it must think, why was he filming his child in intensive care? But for us, it was almost something that we had to do. It was just part of our acceptance of it and part of our journey with it. Oliver's legs were amputated as a result of septicemia, which is blood poisoning caused by the same germs as meningitis. The septicemia in his system attacked his limbs and he developed gangrene in both legs. At that time, I was kind of thinking, well, if it's just the feet, then we'll have ankles and all sorts, but they said, no, that, you know, it would be much further up the leg. Um, and you could see the septicemia and the damage that it had done. But the day that he went into intensive care, they told us about all the things that might happen to him and I just remember begging them to make him live. So I said, I don't care, I'll take him home. I don't care what way he is, but I'll take him home. So I think when you've gone to the point of your child being so close to dying, to get him with two feet lost, it was, it was OK. It wasn't ideal, but it was OK. Every step of Oliver's remarkable recovery was documented. They said, do you want to hold him? Because now that he's off the ventilator, he was still wired up to I don't know how many machines at the time but they managed to unclip whatever they could and they laid him in my arms and it was just it was just so lovely having him just being able to touch him properly hold like cradling him like a baby again um and he was my baby as soon as he had the amputations he just started to get better his whole body his whole you know whole being just started to get better from then on Mary Farnan's 23-year-old son, Alan, died of meningitis in August 2006. He is constantly on her mind. I have Alan's phone, um, so I keep it, I keep it in credit. I use it the odd time, and if I ring gay or that on it to keep it, just to keep it, you know, in use, it frightens the heart out of him. But I ring it every so often just to hear his voice because his, his message is still on it. And I do this sometimes, I just want him to answer. Hi, you've reached Alan's phone. I'm obviously not available at the moment. If you want to leave a message, leave your name and number after the beep and I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thank you. Mary is on her way to tend Alan's grave. This visit has become part of her day. I come every day because, well, I can't see him in the evening. He's not coming in from work. I always feel when I'm leaving, I don't say goodbye. I just say, see you at home. Back home, Mary Farnan makes final preparations for the black tie ball she's organising in aid of meningitis research. There's a lot of work and worry goes into the ball, but he's worth every single bit of it. For us, it's in Alan's memory. We can still do something for him, but also because it is so quick to kill or to maim that it needs to be sorted and, you know, totally wiped out. Hospitals play a small part in Oliver Lewis's life these days. Just like every other four-year-old, Oliver is growing taller. Today, he's being measured for new prosthetic legs. That little sort of foam liner is the exact cast, the exact shape of his leg, and that's what the limb then attaches to. So, um, obviously his leg has grown, his stump has grown a bit, so the, the liner that he has isn't coming up far enough to hold the leg on properly. So they need to make a new one to make it longer, so. But that's a whole new set of legs. You know, not just the liner bit, that's a whole new set of legs that have to be made then, so. I get this. Oliver is uh, an amazing spirited child. I don't know whether there's something in him or whether he knows that he was lucky or or what, but he just he gets on with it. Bye Stephen. Enjoy yourself. It's three.